How's it going, guys? It is 2.51 a.m., 29th of November, Tuesday here in Japan, and we have a difficult question for Imino and Heem for step one and step two. Nearly identical question shows up on one of the Internal Medicine Clinical Mastery Series forms for 2CK. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 70-year-old man, today history of fever and cough. Examination shows dullness to percussion of the right lower lobe. Gram stain of the sputum shows gram positive diplococci. This is strep pneumo, okay? Don't confuse this with gram negative diplococci, which would be nasaria, meningitis, or gonorrhea, okay? So we, we clearly have a strep pneumo here. Luke's eye count, 84,000. What's the normal range for Luke's eye count? I'm asking you, watching this question right now. So the normal range for Luke's eye count should be four to 11,000. So 14% neutrophils, 83% lymphocytes, 3% monocytes. Question wants to know what's most important to assess in this patient. So right away, we know something is awry because if we have a bacterial infection, as in this case, we should have a neutrophilic shift. Neutrophils should be 50 to 60%-ish. So, so we should see neutrophil uh, count maybe uh, or percentage above 60, okay, 70, 80% in a bacterial infection. And we clearly have all lymphocytes here, right? So another question I ask you is, well, how high should leukocyte count be in the setting of a bacterial infection? Just infection in general. If you have a simple pneumonia, it should be maybe in the teens, 13,000, 18,000. If you're septic, could be in the 20s, right? So occasionally a leukamoid reaction where you get an immunologic response that causes increased release of leukocytes from the bone marrow reserve pool, okay? That can be a cause of a very high leukocyte count. But pretty much always when you have a leukocyte count that's quote unquote super fucking elevated, especially about 50,000 per microliter, you should be thinking leukemia. Okay, so I'll get students to see this question, as I said, very similar one on the internal medicine CMS forms, and they'll be able to identify that this is a strep pneumo, this is a pneumonia. Then I say, well, what about the leukocyte count? Super fucking elevated, it's all lymphocytes. So this is CLL, okay, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, it's all lymphocytes here. If we had the same fucking question in a four-year-old, an eight-year-old, it would be ALL, not CLL, right? So... This is CLL, and question just wants to know what's most important to assess. Now, difficult question. I jacked the same answer choices from the clinical master series form. You say, well, I have no idea how to diagnose CLL. We need to know that. Like that's That sounds very obscure. Okay, well, you can either be a hematologist, an immunologist, where you have extremely recondite knowledge, or... We can focus on big picture concepts, not lose the forest for the trees. That's That tends to be the route U.S. simile takes. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Uh, choice A, segmented neutrophil function, wrong fucking answer. This could, in theory, refer to NAD pH oxidase deficiency, chronic granulomatous disease, okay, infection with catalase positive organisms. So this could be a patient who has a dihydrorhodamine test that's positive or abnormal tetrazoleum blue assay, right? In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, CD4 T cell count, wrong answer. HIV, okay? So if you aren't sure what's going on in this question, you say, well, maybe we should check T cells, okay? So, I mean, this is uh, clearly HIV, but even if we're going through the answer choices and we're still not 100% sure, we're just going to look at the others and see if anything just seemed better, right? So let's just keep moving forward here. So choice C, serum IgE concentration, wrong fucking answer, just flagrant distractor. In theory, this could refer to job syndrome, OMG, okay, hyper IgE syndrome, non-existent yieldness on US simile, maybe one question tops across all NBME content for step one and step two combined, okay? So faded is the mnemonic. Uh, abnormal facies, abscesses, staphylococcal cold abscesses, retained primary teeth, uh, IgE, hyper IgE, Dermatologic abnormalities, eczematoid skin lesions. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, total T cell count. Wrong answer. Absolute nonsense. Okay, so, I mean, this is on the CMS form. 
they have CD4 count for choice B and they've got just T cell count for choice D and it's not getting us any further. Now the answer is quantitative immunoglobulins. You say, I still don't get it. What's going on? Okay, now I prefaced with big picture concepts, right? All right, well, you need to know that the reason it's E is because most leukemias are going to be B cell in origin. Now, what do B cells do? Well, they mature into plasma B cells, which secrete immunoglobulins. So you say, well, we have a CLL. It's going to be a B cell leukemia usually. If they're going to give you a rare T cell leukemia, they'll give you a thymic lesion. Okay, they can give you an SVC-like syndrome with a positive Pimbarin sign. Very fucking rare. I think, uh, I mean, the yieldness, pretty much non-existent. It's just more of a a juicy factoid to be aware of, okay, T-cell uh, leukemias, but B-cell origin for the majority of leukemias and lymphomas, okay? So immunoglobulins are secreted by plasma B-cells, okay? Immunoglobulins come from B-cells. So in CLL, we should, we should see decreased immunoglobulins, and there is going to be, even though we have high leukocyte count, we're going to get decreased immunoglobulins, okay? So that's how we arrive at our answer choice here. Force for the trees, as I said. Like, I don't really give a fuck. From a tutor angle, I don't give a fuck that you know of some weird quantitative immunoglobulin assay. That's the answer on the CMS form, quantitative immunoglobulin assay. I don't care that you know that. I think the value of this question is, are you slash were you able to identify that this is a leukemia that supersedes the mere bacterial pneumonia that we have here. Okay, this is leukemia. And then are you able to narrow down the answer choices and use some lateral thinking to arrive at, okay, B cells, and hence uh, we're left with quantitative immunoglobulin assay. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.